Here is another question from one of our viewers. They wanted to know if they could remove the wall under the cantilever here and then move it out to the outside of the cantilever. And this is all going to depend on three or four things. Number one will be how the floor is built. For example, we have joists that are going to be cantilevering back in this example and then connecting to some blocks. And of course, those blocks will connect to full length floor joists. These will be joists that will be sitting on top of two load bearing walls. And if you have a situation like this, you can kind of see where you're not going to be able to move the wall because of the hinge point it's going to create. So for this example here, I would say no, you're not going to be able to remove the wall without installing a beam underneath it. So we won't be able to do this right here. And don't forget that any modifications to your home usually require a structural engineer and local building authority approval. And even though I say this in my video, it's more meant to protect those who really don't know what they're doing and think they can get some information off of the internet and then do it. And that isn't always going to be the case. So next up, let's take a look at our second example where we have full length joists going all the way across. And if you have full length joists without a notch in the joist or shaped floor joist. And these would be floor joists that would be sloping to allow water to drain off of a deck that might have a waterproof coating over it. And if this is the case, then you're going to need to figure out if the length of the joist that are now going from your new wall all the way to the other wall will be strong enough to support the new floor modification. And in order to do this with the notched joist, you're going to need to take the smallest part of the floor joist. For example, if I had a 2 by 12 that was spaced 12 inches on center, which is what we have here, and something that might be acceptable for this type of construction, and then put a notch in it, and now the smallest part of the joist is 9 inches, then that's the number we're going to use to see if our new floor joist spans will work. And in most cases, I'm guessing it won't. However, if you do not have a notched joist, and the board is a 2 by 12 but now you've added 4 feet to your 20-foot span, you now have a 24-foot floor span then these would be the new numbers you would use on a floor framing span chart to see if you could remove this wall and move it over. Otherwise, leave it alone, or you could install a structural support beam here with a post on each side and then maybe some structural footings to help with the new load transfers for your project. Now, when it comes to truss joist or open web type floor joist or other types of floor joist, besides construction standard framing lumber, then you could still end up with the same problems. You will need to figure out how the floor was actually built to figure out if the modification might be something to consider. But in my opinion, Unless the floor joists aren't very long, for example, you might have a wall about 10 foot away from the other wall and your floor joists are not shaped or notched to reduce the width of the floor joist, then the modification might be more likely. But again, something like this might require a structural engineer or at the very least, someone who has done modifications like this before based off of structural engineering information they had from previous jobs that might work on your project.